Previously, I demonstrated the hierarchical algorithm for clustering data. In this video, I will explain the k-means algorithm. In the k-means algorithm, I need to set an initial value k for the number of clusters. But how do I choose the best value for k? Once is selecting a value that is naturally defined by my data. For example, if I have patient medical data relating to 12 different types of cancers, then I would set the k value to 12. If my data didn't have a naturally defined value, I must use another method which will be discussed later in this section. Once I have chosen the value for k, I need to set points to the centroid for each cluster. The naive approach to achieve this step is choosing arbitrary points within the confines of your data space that are as far from each other as possible. This process increases the probability of having better clusters. Another method is to sample your data and cluster this sample using a simple approach like hierarchical clustering. With these clustered samples, I can then pick the nearest point of each cluster. Once I have set k and assigned the initial cluster centroids, the algorithm repeats the following steps until all of the clusters become stable. Firstly, for each point in my dataset, it finds the nearest centroid and adds this point to the cluster. Secondly, it updates the centroid of each cluster according to the assigned points. Consider these points as an example. I am assuming that my data fits into two categories. As such, the value I choose for k is 2. K-means algorithm picks the red cross and the green cross as the initial centroids. This ends the initialization of the algorithm. First step is to then assign each data point to its nearest centroid. The second step of the algorithm is to update the centroid position of each cluster according to the points of each cluster. The new centroid now becomes this. With the update of the centroids, we return to the first step of the algorithm, and the points are reassigned to their closest centroid. The algorithm then repeats these two steps. After each point is assigned to the new clusters, the algorithm updates the centroids again. After these first few steps, the algorithm is beginning to find a stable clustering. The algorithm repeats these two steps, assignment, and then update one more time, and this achieves a stable clustering arrangement. As you can see, the final step only updates the position of the centroids, and the points within each cluster do not change. This is how I know that the algorithm has reached a stable position, and it means that I can stop the algorithm here. The k-means algorithm is mainly used in clustering since it finds highly accurate clusters in many cases. However, the algorithm needs to pass through all of the data several times, and it needs to access all of the data on each pass. Therefore, it should be become more efficient to be used in large-scale data. Next, you will look at a method for finding a suitable k-value. This is important for when your data can't be easily categorized, or you are unsure of what categories exist within your data. Additionally, you can find some details about the efficiency of k-means and other clustering algorithms.